Good evening, everybody. So today's class is going to be on. Investigation Occupational Accident and Diseases, MQB 7035, Occupational Health. So welcome back. So this slide just shows you uh, recently news of a uh, juru teknik maut alat pemadam api meletup. Basically, it means that the juru teknik is technical officer die because of the exploding uh, fire extinguisher. So these are basically some of the incidents that happen in the hospital and I think it's the common uh, issues that is faced by all hospital. So the, the thing about incidents is that can it be prevented and how do we prevent it? So if we can identify the cause of the incidents, then we can basically try to prevent the incidents from occurring. So safety issues that happen is it depends, it can be considered as incidents or accidents hazard identification risk assessment, control measure, OSH management system, and also emergency plan. So what is the difference between an incidence and an accident? So when I talk about incident and accident, is it because of safety, freedom from risk or danger, and control of accident loss, incidents, near miss, or accidents? Accidents is an undesirable event that result in harm of to people, damage to property, and loss process, is that for contact with substance, chemical, thermal, above the threshold limit of the body or structure? So when you talk about this is result from contact with substance, chemical, thermal, above the threshold limit of body or structure, this is basically talk about injury or loss of property. So what's the difference between an incidence and an accident? Uh, can anyone try and discuss and tell me what? why do we use the word, when do we use the word incidents and when do we use the word accidents? Yes, please, anyone? Uh, Prof, uh, can I answer? Okay, no problem. Okay, uh, incident is about just an uh, occurrence of an event. Uh, while, uh, for example, uh, uh, in uh, aviation cell, you just uh, like, uh, for example, a near miss is considered an incident. Uh, accident is the unprecedented uh, event that lead into the loss of uh, uh, human life or properties. What you say? Accident is what? Uh, unprecedented event that lead into... And what? Uh, and what? Sorry, uh, I can't get the word. And? Uh, unprecedented event. Unpresent, un unprecedented event. Unprecedented event. Okay, what does that mean? Huh? What does the word mean? Uh, something that you will not expect to occur, uh, but it's always a, there is a, a precedent before the accident happened. So that's basically you, you're talking about the accident is something that you don't expect it to occur, correct? Yes, bro. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Anyone can discuss can, uh, te can tell me what is the what is incidents and accidents i mean it's, it's quite an interesting interesting uh, discussion but anyone else have other other things okay, okay, they can they want to they want to bring forward uh, hi bro can i try can I hear? yeah yeah everybody can try if accident is something that usually result in something more serious sorry uh, accident is something that will result in something more serious than right. in the outcome compared to incident where uh, it happened but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's something uh, undesirable or that serious. Okay, great. Uh, anyone else want to want to share the ideas of what is incidents, what is accidents? Hi bro, Adam here. I think Adam, hi. Uh, both incident and accident, uh, both are unplanned event. Right. But then incident does, 
has no harm caused by the the event but accident right. caused harm okay that also can be considered all right very good what else anyone else anyone else Basically, incidents and accident. In the the idea is that when when you talk about when you talk, when you look at safety issues, uh, the word accidents comes comes into play. I think what you all what you all discuss is uh, accident is less serious. Sorry, incident is less serious. Accident is basically an unpredicted or an, an, an unprecedented event, and which means that it is it is un is non predictable. That means you cannot you won't you won't know whether it's going to occur or not. So, so if you don't know something is going to occur or not, if you know if you don't know something is going to be happen or not, so can you plan for it? Can you can you prevent it? If you if you think that something is not you don't you is it's unprecedented, which means that something is not going is is uh is unpredictable. Are you can you can you can you prepare for such 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 a uh, event? Anyone? If no one talks, then we can we can start asking questions. All right. Uh, Adam, 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 you answer just now. All right. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, let me think. I think no, everybody can think. No worries. Yeah. Uh, we can identify the risk to reduce the occurrence of uh, unplanned event. But but when someone but who 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 was the one who said unprecedent unprecedented and is basically unpredictable? Uh, it's me, Prof. Rosli. Okay, Adam. Adam is there. All right. So what? Why? Why? What? So the idea is, if it's unprecedented, that means it is not predict not predictable, and it's not predictable, that means you cannot plan for it. Is it correct? Uh, no, Prof. Uh, accident can be prevented, uh, provided you uh, because accident always it it, it always uh, came up from a sequence of event that lead into an accident. Mm. Uh, okay. So uh, if you manage to uh, uh, secure all the sequence of event before mm. it leads into the mishap, actually accident can be prevented. Okay. All right. Interesting. Maybe we'll just we'll just leave this for a while and then we come back come back to it later at the end of the class and then we, someone can remind me what 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 is the what's the difference all right but it's just words don't worry all right you can, you can use either one currently so we just we just continue and then we come back later is it okay okay problem all right but a good discussion all right so, so these are some of the safety regulations under the FMA. So if I may have fencing regulation, have person in charge regulation, certification of competency, notification certificate of fitness and inspection, steam boiler and fire pressure vessel, electrical passenger good lift, building operation of working and uh, engineering construction, safety, health and welfare. So there's basically a lot of this regulation is comes under uh, FMA. Although some of this, some of this basically comes under FMA, but some of it is basically do apply, do apply to uh, normal uh, non non uh, uh, factory basically is because if you look at the face called factory machinery act basically it, it is so focused on machinery but don't worry about this don't worry about this because by the time you finish finish your what you call that your lecture there will be the end of the parliament sitting so most probably the new act of uh, occupation safety and health will come into effect and that will basically remove fma and then uh, come out and all the all the relevant FMA uh, legislation will be basically incorporated into the new occupation safety and health. So the idea is that there are some 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 uh, safety what we call regulations or safety uh, uh, legislation that is related to safety alone. All right. So the misconception is accident cannot be prevented. Why? Well, and we don't have many accidents. Safety is expensive, and we are insured anyway. The the, the issue of what why when you talk about accident cannot be prevented. Basically, ex, that's why that's why the word accident itself is 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 from the word that is is something is unpredictable and or less able to predict and cannot basically we we don't we think that it is going to be accident. I, the 
the the what we call the uh, the phrase I, that I always use for my for to all my students, undergraduate and postgraduate students, is that the only accident is that you are here with me today. Why? Anyone? The only accident is that you are here with me today. What does that mean? Anyone? Or, or you don't agree with what I say? Come on, quickly. I have I want to finish the class early so that I can I can I can do other things. I have a very long day today. Right. I just came back from uh, Hospital Kuala Lumpur. I met an old friend there, uh, Dr. Kamarudin. Anyone knows Dr. Kamarudin? Who is a deputy uh, Pungara number uh, number two man in the uh, uh, HKL. She he was from uh, Sungai Buloh Hospital. Anyone? Yeah, Prof. I'm currently working in Hospital Buloh. Oh. Sorry, you know you know him, ah? Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. In he was the Pengara, and then he came to HKL as the Timbara Pengara. Yeah, HKL Timbara Pengara. So it's I mean it's good. It's good. He's my he's my old uh, boss in. Uh, what we call uh, when I was working in uh, Pankaran Hulu. That's okay. The question is still the same. The question is uh, the only accident that I know, the phrase that I always use that, is that you're here. Before. Anyone disagree with what I say? I disagree, bro. Why? Uh, like, uh, I think it's uh, we pre planned that uh, the class will be with you, and somehow we don't expect any hazards from you. I just, it's not about the class. The class, the class is not, it's not a class, it basically it's more of your bond, correct? Is, is, is your birth an accident or an incident? Is, is your birth a planned event or is this an accidental event? Accidental. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I'm planned. That means, that means, that means you are here with me because there's an accident. But is that, is that actually an accident? Not really, correct. Yeah, you know that you know that you know that if you do something, there's an outcome to it, correct? Correct. But uh, I mean, if let's say it's a planned pregnancy, so meaning to say the couple actually planned for the child, right? So it can't be accidental. Yes, if a planned pregnancy, not accident. But if it's yeah. not a planned pregnancy, is then it's an accident? Is it an accident or not? Not really, because you know that yeah. if you perform, if you perform SI. Sexual intercourse, you will get pregnant, correct? There's a chances of you getting pregnant. Yeah. So it's not. It's not an accident. There is. There is basically. Oh, it is. It, although it's called unplanned, but it's not an accident. It's. It's, it's just that. You, you. You. You did not consider all the all the risks associated with it. All right. So the idea of using accident is basically very very difficult for uh when you want to when you want to communicate with people. Because when you can communicate with people, like you use the word kemalangan, it's, it's, it's a Malay term for accident. What does, what does kemalangan mean? Kemalangan comes from the word malang, correct? What does malang mean? Unfortunate. Yes, unfortunate. But it's not an unfortunate event, correct? It's, it's a known event because you know the risk. And for those, who, for those of you who basically have gone through my class of risk assessment, you know that everything is can be assessed to risk. Everything is based on risk. Whether you you can control the risk or not. Sometimes you can control the risk. Sometimes you cannot control the risk. But you if you cannot control the risk, you basically avoid the risk, correct? So you avoid avoid getting getting into risky situation. So the idea is the issue is if you if you start if you start talking about accidents 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 that is basically unpresented unprecedented then then you become a pr issue of you don't, it's not preventable, and that is not what we want to, for you to take home today. We want to take home, we want to, for you to take home today is everything is preventable, but whether the, whether the cost itself is, is big enough that we want to prevent it or not, all right? 
whether we are, whether it's cost effective or not, whether to prevent or not, everything is preventable because safety itself is basically you can you can have enough safety to actually prevent anything. All right. So the the second the, the second thing is uh, we don't have many ac accident. Okay, and safety is expensive. Also, is a mis misconception, and we are insured anyway. Is that is that is that a problem or not? When you talk about we are insured anyway, let's say you 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 go you you went into a car accident and you hit someone and you are insured. The insurer will pay for everything, all right. But your the value of your car actually decreases, correct? After accident, you got lost time. Is that insured or not? Is your lost time insured or not? Your property is insured, but your lost time might not be insured. So the idea is, yes, my prop my my property is insured, but my lost time is not insured. My loss of reputation is not insured. My loss of business is not insured. So, so the idea, the, the, the thing is, it is, say, it is cheaper for you to actually look at it from the perspective of preventing an accident or incident than having it basically uh, taking it for due to chance. So the idea is accident there's no there's no anything that's due to chance that's that's why you need you need to you need to be uh understand that all right so let's let's look at uh statistic of ilo i think i think this is basically we have discussed this before but just to just to uh recap basically occupational injuries kills three thousand three thousand eighty thousand people but of course 2.5 million death is due to uh what related diseases and has 60 million cases of occupational illnesses it is in 2017 all right. Of course, we know this year that there are basically workers, actually country highest number of healthcare deaths due to COVID-19. Mexico, United States, uh, uh, UK, Brazil, Russia, India, South Africa, and Italy. How many healthcare workers died due to COVID-19 in, in, in Malaysia? Zero. Yes, zero. There are actually two healthcare workers that passed away but the risk is not from uh, exposure in the health in the workplace so it's not an occupational disease it's basically a community acquired uh, disease i think there's around one or two correct you remember at the beginning of the beginning of the of the uh, in, uh, issue all right so the idea is okay so so the cost the cost of covid can you prevent covid yes can you prevent the disease yes Basically, it's an incident, and how do you prevent it? Because you know the risk, you know the exposure, you know the transmission, you know everything. But whether whether the cost is is basically enough or not, or whether whether you want to to prevent it or not, all right? So what what that why estimate the number of uh, accidents? Because there's massive underreporting. National data collected from various sources like Social Security, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Labor, National National Survey. So, but there's still, still, still what we call underreporting. So, who should investigate accident? Of course, everybody can investigate accident, and it is important that everybody investigate accident because, at the end, is that what you need to know is that you need to one need to prevent the accident. To prevent the accident, you need to identify the cause of the accident, and the cause of the accident is where 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 you want to prevent identify so that you can have intervention to try to prevent the accident. So, okay, accident and okay, with disease, a serious matter, basically pain and suffering, economic losses. How can it be prevented? Conduct effective investigation, identify all the causes that can lead to an accident. All right, so that's important. Okay, so how how big the financial burden is? It's around. It has been four percent for many many years. All right, from the last last IO statistic until the current IO statistic is in 4%. And of course, develop, developing countries is much worse. It's basically up to 10% of the GDP. GDP is gross domestic product. All right, I think I've discussed this gross domestic product before. Of course, we know that even COVID itself, this year we have we lost, of course, a lot of, loss of uh, money that due to, due to the problem of COVID. So the idea is, are we doing uh, 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 our intervention now Cost effective or not? To or uh, if, if uh, our intervention now or, or, or implementing the uh, CMCO cost effective or not in a way of 
preventing or identifying the risk. So the idea is if you if you don't go if you don't go in depth and if you don't understand that you need to go in depth, not just not just on accident, but also on let's say on infectious disease or things like that, to investigate the case to identify all the causes and, and try to address the causes and not just because you you want you want to uh, look at it and then you want to want to have a simple way of doing it but the idea is is that simple cost effective or not cost effective so what so what is the what is the thing that you need to do so why should we investigate basically to prevent further accident understand how and why things went wrong to prevent further business losses failure to meet contractual obligation costs related to criminal and civil cases to find weakness in operating procedures so they can be strengthened and to find deficiency in risk control management that may replicate throughout the organization. So the idea is that you need to look at this uh, holistically and not just on, not just because there is something happening and then you start to blame the person for not functioning or not following SOP. So, so the idea, the idea to start with when I when I went for interview and people was angry with me because I say that. Uh, you did not explain to you, you did not explain to people properly about how what why do you follow SOP that, that that is that is the issue that we need to we need to understand because we have not identified the root cause and all the causes and then why does people don't do it that's why we were not able to uh, convince people of doing it in the in, in and to communicate the correct way of why you should do something right so the idea is you need to look at all uh, sources of accidents or of incidents. Basically, this is just to just to further inform, to, to, to explain to higher management, have a formal record of what happened, and then make emergency plan and improve on response and ready for next incidents and to identify breaches in civil and criminal legislation. So occupational accident, basically, an occurrence arising out of or in the course of work which result of fatal or non-fatal injury. Occupational disease covers any diseases contracted as a result of exposure to hazard arising from a work activity. Dangerous occurrence, a readily identifiable event is defined under the national law and regulation with the potential to cause an injury disease persons at work or in the public. Incidents and near miss. An event not necessarily defined under the national law or regulation that could have caused harm to person at work or to the public. So the idea is that some people define incidents different from accidents and they say incidents, they, they link it to near miss. It's okay, no matter how you define it, but, but the idea is that communicating that accident can be preventable is more important. It doesn't matter what word you use, you either use incidents or accident. It is not, it is okay with me, it's okay with a lot of people, but the idea is to communicate properly that accident is preventable. All accidents are preventable because all accidents, there is an identifiable risk to that accident itself. Okay, clear. That, that is that is much less the clear, clearest thing that you need, you need to understand, all right? So near miss, but near miss, what do you mean by near miss? Near miss is something that happened or have not happened or going to happen that may lead to an injury or a loss, property loss. So that's called a near miss. Something that can happen that may lead to a worse outcome. That's called a near miss or, but no, that's called an incident. All right, so near miss basically there's something is there that not no injury has occurred, it's called a near miss. So an event that while not causing harm, has a potential to cause injury or ill health. So it's called a near miss. So undesirable circumstances, a set of condition or circumstances that have the potential to cause injury or illness, as example, untrainers handling a heavy patient. So undesirable circumstances. Clear? Uh, are you okay? Yes, Prof. Yes, Prof. Good, yes, all right. Prof. So we are clear with what I said. So what is an investigation? Basically, investigation is just a reactive process, correct? And uh, investigation happens after 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 the fact, all right. After the fact that something has went wrong. That's why that's why you do an investigation. So to pre to to reduce the investigation, sometimes people do uh, auditing to make sure that you follow you that there's no 
issue, although there's although the whole year you have not reported any inc incident or accidents, but you do audit to make sure that that this is not a reactive but a more proactive uh, procedure. So a reactive procedure identify why and how an undesirable event, accident, incident occur, and establish action required to prevent a similar event, thereby leading to an improvement in working condition and in the occupational safety and health management system. So the idea, the, the, the thing that you must understand that it is all in a system, system make thing. So you if you look at it from occupational safety and health, that if you can if you can if you can improve the system, then you can you basically you can improve occupational safety and health and basically the occupational safety and health management and then there's a management system. So what could happen? All right, a near miss could lead to a minor injury, could lead to a major injury and also could lead to death. So the idea is you need to identify near misses to prevent minor injury, major injury and death. So what is near misses and how do you prevent near misses? So the idea of near misses is you need to report, you need to have a mechanism to report near misses and then to investigate near misses and to find how can we improve on near misses. The idea of investigation is to find a way of improving the system so that it does not occur again is not the investigation is not to find fault is not to uh, reprimand anyone that have done anything wrong but to find the system at the end it's a system failure it's not a person failure don't although a person person may fail but why does a person fail to act in a certain way is because the system doesn't act in that way just like what we're happening now if you have two people two group of people one group of people doing something, they are not, they are not reprimanded. The other group is reprimanded. So the, the group that's not reprimanded, the, so there's a unjust action taken on two different groups. That's why the, the system did not work and people won't be following uh, the system itself. So fatal injury, one fatal injury, you get 10 serious injuries, you get 30 minor injuries, you get 600 near misses. So the idea is that if you identify all the near misses, you will prevent the mild injury, you prevent the serious injury, and you basically prevent the fatal injury. The idea is that when you have a one fatal injury, that means you have missed 640 incidents that have happened before it, and you have not taken action that you supposed to take. So that is also what what is what it means in this in this uh, accident pyramid. All right, this accident pyramid is basically quite old concept that. If there's one in, in fatal injury, that means you have not identified 640 in incidents that have happened that you can have, you could have saved the condition and safe, and then you, you have prevented the fatal injury. That's what we do all the time as safety and health. We try to identify near miss, mild injuries, and and basically serious. So the near miss is the one that we need to un understand what is near miss and how do we identify near misses. All right. What get investigated? Basically, those things that get investigated are those things that are important or in in what. But actually, everything should be investigated so that we can get the to the root of the problem or the root cause. So that's why sometimes investigation is called root cause investigation. So not just in serious incidents, not just incidents with high profile incidents. So it's, it's much better to investigate everything if it's possible. And that's why training more people to be able to, to do the, the job is better than just doing it in for in a small group of people that then you would not be able to investigate everything. The idea is not to find fault. The idea basically is to find solution. So generally all fatal accidents are investigated, correct? Some serious accidents are critical, correct? Very few accidents and nemesis are investigated. So the idea is that you need to look at how do we look at incidents near misses and and, and 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 minor injuries so that we can prevent the major event that is the that is the main thing if we can be prevent the major event that is what is important so we try to improve that so equates to a small percentage quieter effective investigation to learn lessons and prevent further accidents so the idea is that you need to look at it how do we increase the number of cases that we uh, investigated increase the number of Reporting of near misses. So, what are near misses, and how can how should how can we report near misses? We need to have a system to report near misses, not just to report accident. 
if you see if you see all if you see everything that you have earlier that we, I basically uh, shared with you the cases is basically more on accident that have already occurred. It's not near misses that is there. So if a near misses means that you have find a needle in needle, you have to be reported. So that's got a near miss reporting. So how do you do that and why why should you do that? All right. Of course, there are many theories of how to prevent accident. One of it is a Harish domino theory is that if you think that you can, you have accident actually occurs of an injury, invariable result from a complicated sequence of factors, at least one of which being accident itself. So the idea is that if you can remove one of those, then basically you will be able to, to prevent the domino effect. That's what we are doing now, correct? Sometimes we say, okay, we remove, we, we, have social distancing and then that would basically be able to remove or remove the person that be able to remove. But this is looking at things from a one dimensional perspective and that might not might not be might not be what uh, is important. So the theory provides that foundation accident prevention measure aimed at creating unsafe act or unsafe condition. So you just remove that and then accident will not occur, injury will not occur because of the other form. But Let's look at it from a different perspective. Let's look at it from another theory, theory basically the Intentional Loss Control Institute theory, basically this loss of control theory or lack of control. So there's a lack of control, there's basic causes, immediate causes, incidents and loss. And basically inadequate, like lack of control is included inadequate program, program standard and com compliance to standard. So you look at it from multiple perspective instead of just one domain perspective and then you try to address everything. Lack of control. Can you improve the control or not? Or can you can you reduce the basic causes or not? Can you improve the the personal factor and job factor that have led to the accident or not? How do you identify that issue? Can you look at immediate cause of the accident or not? Standard of act and condition. Whether there is substandard of act that the person actually done and why does why there was a substandard of act or substandard of condition. Basically looking at lighting, looking at weather, looking at things like that. Why is there a substandard condition? So in those substandard condition, what action should be taken? All right, because we know that environmental conditions are not always predictable and are not able to control the environment, especially you're talking about external environment, not the internal environment. So how can you prevent things from happening when there is a substandard condition? And the incidence itself is talking about contact with energy and substances. How can we remove the energy or remove the substance to remove the contact? And the idea is the loss itself is people, property, process, and profit. So looking at it from the uh, full way perspective. But that is this is also very, very linear, correct? Linear in the sense that you're looking at it from a linear perspective. So is there anything else that we can do? We can look at multi-causation models, all right? That means that it's not just linear, but there's many causes that leads to a condition. So by identifying all the causes that lead to the condition, like what was mentioned just now, that because of many, many, many different things that have occurred simultaneously, that's what it caused to the unprecedented event that also we can actually try and reduce that. Like multiple causation model of Peterson in 1971 says that you can have cause A, B, C, D, E, and one of it is with an unsafe condition and unsafe act and lead to accident. Accident, of course, you come you result in injury, damage, or near misses. So looking at this, we can look at we can come into a and there's another another model that comes into play, the James James Reason model, looking at Swiss cheese model. Of course, this has been discussed many many times. The Swiss cheese model that uh, if you look at the prevention of uh, COVID-19, we can look at we can use the Swiss cheese model. Swiss cheese model is that states that if everything is in line, then that's where you get the losses. So basically, you can control it from different perspective. But uh, James Reason model also look at it from two perspectives, basically from human human and also from system perspective. The human the human part of it you must you must also is important. The system part also is important. So not just not just thinking that because we cannot control human human behavior, we don't we don't do anything about it. But the idea is that you have to improve human behavior because human behavior actually can also predict system failure and system failure also can can help in reducing human uh, and irregularity of human behavior. So the idea is that you have must have both system that comes into play and not just the switches. Basically, you need to look at it from multi-dimensional perspective. So look at it from the different. Basically, you can have a root cause. You analyze the root cause. You identify the causes, basic causes, immediate causes and incident loss. 
So the the thing is that this is this is something similar to if you are from medical medical uh, if you are a doctor, correct? Most of you are a doctor. You have written uh, death certificate. So death certificate is where you call about what's the immediate cause, what's the basic cause, and what the root cause of that. So you, you can do the same thing for accidents, and then you will basically be able to identify the root cause. So to the immediate cause is not the one that actually leads to the accident. The basic cause is not the one that leads to the accident, but the root cause is the one that leads to the accident. But by by looking at it and uh, addressing the cause, root cause, the basic cause, immediate cause, and, and you know, that it will prevent the incident or the loss. How, am, how are you now? Are you okay? Oh, am I going okay, a bit too fast? Clear. Yeah, clear. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. All right. So the, the 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 theory that I have discussed basically there's a lot of theories. All right. It's just at the end of the day is that whichever theory the theory is uh, the idea is that it's not a one dimensional aspect that you need to you need to look at. That's why you need to say it's not one dimensional. It's not that not that just that you remove or you the person or you you remove the the thing that leads to leads to the uh, what we call it means even even though if you if you have a what we call a engineering measure to to prevent people from let's say driving fast correct and uh, you you put in you put in a a uh, system that control the that 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 control the speed of the car but that can be removed, that can be modified, that can be what? So the idea is that why the, the, the thing is that it's not just from one perspective, like the, the Swiss she says, it's not just from not just from uh, the system perspective, engineering perspective, also for human behavior. How can we understand human behavior? And how can we use that behavior itself to improve safety and health? Let's look at this little, little thing and then we would basically uh what? Accident on a circular saw bench, all right? So circular saw, you know, circular saw is used. It's a, it's a round, big saw that's on a bench, and then you used to cut wood, is it? All right. So the idea is that this worker actually cut her hand in a circular saw. This this uh, this example came from the International Labour Organization in investigation of occupational accident and diseases, a practical guide for labour inspector. Although it's for labour inspector, but I think it's it's very useful for people for us to basically be able to use that and uh, learn something about it. So let's look at it from this way. So what is what went wrong actually? Accident happened, all right? Accident is the worker cut his hand. So what went wrong? Right. Operators can make contact with the saw blade, saw blade unguarded. Operator was using unguarded saw, inadequate maintenance, inadequate training, inadequate supervision, inadequate safety and health management, and management not committed to safety and health. You look at this, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight steps before the accident actually happened, all right? And that is the immediate cause, the underlying cause, and the root cause before the accident actually happened. So by just removing or by just addressing one or all of the eight causes, you basically you prevent the accident from happening, all right? So if we, you does not, but not just not just looking at it from one perspective, but looking at it from multiple perspectives that you can prevent the accident from happening. So how can you improve? How can you ensure that the operator's hand is not in contact with blade or saw blade not guarded or operator was using unguarded saw? Inadequate maintenance, inadequate training, inadequate supervision, inadequate safety and help. So it took eight steps before actually the accident happened. This is just to show that workers cut his hand and have immediate cause. Workers hand was contact with gas saw, underlying cause, workers using unguarded saw, root cause, enterprise had failed to identify hazard and appropriate control measure, in ensuring workers trained, inadequate and supervised. That is the root cause and uh, identify the root cause 
you look at it, the root cause it doesn't blame the worker. The root cause blame the look at the system issue, and there's something also missing there. Basically, it's not just the worker, well, not just training a worker of how to do it, but also understanding the cultural culture background of the worker. Just by training, say that okay, you don't do this, but if you're culturally, you have not approached it from the behavioral science perspective or cultural perspective, then you would go wrong and the workers would just not follow it. So the idea is that you need to understand from the root of that how people actually behave when they are given a stimuli. Root cause, cause of accident, initiating event or failing from which all other causes are failing spring. Root cause are generally management, planning and organization failure. Underlying cause is a less obvious system organization reason for an adverse event happening, example, pre-startup machinery check are not carried out by supervision. The hazard has not been adequately considered well a suitable or sufficient risk assessment or production pressure are too great, etc. And immediate cause is the event that have occurred. So underlying cause, root cause, immediate cause. So the idea is that you need to look at it from this perspective. A person slip and fall on a flash of oil. What happened? Let's have a discussion. What happened? What could go wrong? What is the immediate cause? What is the underlying cause? What is the root cause? Okay, why is there a flash of oil there, first of all? Someone might eat the oil. Sorry? The immediate cause would be like the patch of oil on the ground and yes. the immediate cause of okay, immediate, immediate cause is, is very obvious, all right? Immediate cause is always obvious. The patch of oil and the worker was not looking at the patch of oil, all right? So what are the, what, why, why is there a patch of oil there? Why the worker was not looking at the patch of oil? Maybe cause because uh, the other workers or someone or it leaked from the machine because of lack of maintenance. All right, could be that, could be that, could be many things. The 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 the, the idea is that if you if you start to if you just discuss and think about it, you will basically come up with a lot of different reasons for doing it. All right, maybe maybe. All right, maybe it's the media cause because it's sleeping on the oil. Underlying cause is. A person sleep on a patch of oil. Inadequate housekeeping because people don't clean. Inadequate maintenance. That's why the machine is leaking oil. Lack of supervision and monitoring. Inadequate health and safety management issue. Management not committed to health and safety. Of course, there's other 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 uh, underlying cause and other uh, root causes also that you can go through. So this is just maybe just one path of why people sleep on a patch of oil. But it, there is there can be many paths. Maybe there is lack of lighting that leads to the fellow cannot see the flash of oil, all right, or environmental factor, all right. So the idea is that there are also other things. So that I, this is just to look at it from a root cause and looking at it from one, what we call, single dimension. Later we talk about multiple dimension, how to add uh, that. So common for failing accident investigation, failing to identify all the causes that accident immediately underlying and root causes Immediate cause is found and the and investigation stopped. The injured workers may be partially at fault, but it's likely fault also lies in other areas, management system and work, etc. So the idea is never to blame the workers, never to blame the person who got the disease, never to blame the person who had has spread the prop have have I have spread the issue. Siva Ganga case, we are blaming the person for not following SOP. All right. I can tell you that even doctors, even we telling them to follow SOP, they also didn't follow SOP. So how can you expect a person who is the owner of a uh, Mamak store, the education level of course is lower than a doctor, not follow SOP, but the doctor itself is not following SOP. Why? 
I had certainly identified a doctor, not a group of doctors, not following SOP yesterday. All right, and I tell them to follow SOP. Okay, and I came back and they still don't follow SOP. Why? What is the cause of it? What's the root cause of it? Why they don't follow SOP? So the thing is, you need to think about it. You, need, you cannot just blame the person for not following SOP. You got to think of it. Why don't they follow SOP? All right, when even a doctor cannot follow SOP. Accident and diseases, every security must be undertaken as soon as after the event is practicable. It must be undertaken sensitively to collect as much relevant information as practicable. It must seek to find the immediate root causes. However, uncomfortable, it should not, it then should be formulated. And the idea is that it should not blame the, what we call, the person who is having caused the accident or who is involved in the accident. So, I say investigation, basically, preparation before commencing investigation, gathering information, analyzing information, identifying risk, risk control and action plan, and final report writing. Before commencing investigation, so you need to prepare first. All right. Once decision of investigation taken, action required before the site visit. Consider needs to immediate visit if possible. Advise not to disturb the site unless for emergency action. If not possible, request for photograph to be taken so that you you look at it from the whole perspective and understand what actually happened, so that people don't modify or change the in uh, or basically to change their perspective later on. Allocation of resources, obtain record, ensure investigation are equipped with appropriate personnel protective equipment, e equipment to record site condition, as example, steel or video camera and tape measure. So these are basically more of for, for more of formal investigation into an accident by a I say a uh, inspector or a health inspector or a safety and health inspector from Department of Occupation Safety and Health. But for you who want to investigate this, these are some of the things that you can consider and can take into consideration when you want to investigate a, a accident. So gathering information is the most difficult part of the whole process. What kind of information you gather? How you gather information? How do you how do you interview the uh, uh, the person who's basically ex who, who saw the incident, how do you interview the person who's involved in the, in, in the incident or the accident? So we come back to the X and Y issue again. The X is who, when, what, who, where, when, what, and how, and the move that, that, that who is who is involved, where it happened, when it happened, what happened, and how it happened. But for you to basically look at the root cause or to the the underlying cause is more important. Is is the issue is why did it happen? So that's the the question that we always want to ask is why did it happen? And of course, this is very irritating question. And until you find the find you answer all the why, then you basically you come to the end of your investigation. If not, then you still why something happened. So gathering information is looking at the who, when, what, where, how, and why. So looking at people, place, condition, equipment, work area, and system of work. So you look at everything when you want to look at it. Start from the people, look at the place, look at the condition. Condition is the environmental condition, the lighting, the, the sound, the noise, things like that. Equipment, whether the equipment is basically functioning or not, new or whether the equipment has been serviced or not. Work area itself, whether the work area is clean or dirty or is congested or there's a lot of uh, uh, that's difficult to, there's not enough uh, room to actually maneuver. And uh, the, uh, the last thing is system issue of why or uh, SOP, things like that. So, so the thing you've got to look at it from that perspective also. So what type of information you collect? Witness evidence, of course, is important. Physical evidence also is important. And of course, the machinery, chemical, dust, personal protective equipment. 
you can you can take it. This is basically more for uh for invest labor in labor inspector. Of course, you look at document documentary of evidence, photography provided that to be enterprise uh, taken by investigator, manufacturing operating instruction, safety data sheet. SDS is safety data sheet. It's actually more focused on chemical safety data sheet, but it's mostly the enterprise paper, training record, operation instruction, maintenance record, examination report. So all so whatever information you can collect that is related to the incidents or related to the training or related to the why the workers actually happen can be collected so that you can have a thorough investigation. So gathering information from witness depends on a number of factors like weakness, like whether the age, past experience, training, education, physical conditions, stress, peer pressure, personal interest, home life, job satisfaction, security and ambition. So the idea is that is the witness reliable or not to give you the information? Or, so that is also, that's why it's better to collect information for more than one witness for you to do a accident investigation. So inspector and investigator experience training attitude also need to be taken into consideration. I think this is a very common picture. Look at this picture and you can you can see a lot of things. All right, tell me what can you see? Or how many faces is there? So number two faces. Three faces. Three faces. <laughs> Three, four faces. <laughs> four faces. All right. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How many faces is there? This one? This is one face. All right. This is one face. All right. This is one face. All right. So three already. This is one face. This is one face. This is one face. All right. I think there's one more. I just don't remember where is it. All right, so there's one more face. Okay. So the idea is the eye comes don't the 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 eye don't see what the brain don't know. All right. Basically, you cannot see out. You, you just you don't observe. You are not observant because you have not been trained to be observant. So the idea is you need to be trained to be observant. You need to be trained to look identify issues that is related to safety and health. And how do you get trained to do that? Basically, you need more practice and more looking at issues from a bigger perspective. Same thing, is this an old woman or a young woman? Of course, some people say it's an old woman, some people say it's a young woman, but it's just lines, all right? Anyone can identify the old woman, okay? This is a young woman, all right? Is this a young woman? All right, and this is the old woman, all right? Remember? Okay, yeah. so... So the idea is that you just need to be able to look at it. So, so interviewing weakness, you can use the PIS technique. All right, what is PIS? Basically, you plan, engage, account, close, and evaluate. So what do you mean by planning? Basically, you need to all interviewer will be required for planning. What subject area will be covered and in what area order list of areas to ensure they will be covered draft question may be required what is the role with interview take place principal invest interviewer and summarizer other resources like legal form equipment tape recorder tapes furniture etc so planning planning is important of course planning is important in everything you need to plan before you actually do then you need to how you need to know how to engage with people you need to look at how do you give let the person become comfortable and how do you explain to the person that this is just an investigation, we're not, we're not here to find fault, we're not here to penalize anybody, we're not here to reprimand anybody, we're just here to basically find fault so that we can identify the fault, identify the issue and come out with a solution and basically to improve the situation. That is what we're trying to do. All right, so that's the thing that you need to do, explain, engage and explain. Account, be accountable and, and, and clarity. Basically, the account is where the information obtained from the witness, allow the witness to speak, do not interrupt and, and thank them for, for responding. Use active listening, make eye contact, note your head, take limited notes, all right? Of course, this is very difficult when we are doing it online, all right? When I'm talking to you online, so I cannot, I, actually, I don't know whether you're listening or not, all right? Are you making eye contact with me? Are you nodding your head? Are you taking notes or not? 
So I'm talking all the time. I just I don't know what you are doing. So so it's quite it, it, it is that's why that's why although although I find it easy to talk to a screen and don't get people talking back to me because I'm used to it. All right. But it become difficult. It is become not connected. All right. You're not connected with the person. That's why you need we need to meet sometimes and talk to each other face to face so that we can we can get to we can I can see your eye. I can see your your head, I can see it, you know, what whether whether you're basically taking time. Okay, are you okay? Are you yes, responding? Are you yes, are you listening or not? Are you actively yeah. listening? Or not? Yes, 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 bro. Yes, bro. Do you make eye contact? I I'm making eye contact with you. I'm seeing. I'm looking at you all the time. All right. I'm trying to look at you. But whether I'm looking at whether you think that I'm looking at you or not is the different thing. All right. So closure. So you need to you need to have a closure. Basically, this is at the conclusion to basically to summarize the information given and to make sure that the information provided by the witness is the the information and the information provided by the witness is the information that is the witness want to say and and it's not what you think the witness want to say. So you need to you need to get back the information from the witness. and don't and, and the idea is don't put don't put words into into the witness mouth and try and manipulate the, the information so closure is what is important and then of course we must thank the thank the thank the workers and the witness and uh, after that you you evaluate all the information and see what are what are the issue the five the why the and the five w and the one h of course the why is the one is important in looking at the how to summarize and evaluate an, an issue why it happened why is it happening Okay. Question, communicate with weakness, whether you need an interpreter or not, only ask question the witness has knowledge of to answer. All right, like what do you see? Could, could your supervisor see anything too? That is basically, so the idea is that what is the witness can see instead of asking question that is not the witness can do. So quite questioning witness do not show emotion, agree or disagree with the witness, assist the witness to answer the question. So not, so those are the things that we we have a wrong investigation. So all these things, all these, all these things basically would, all this training would allow you to become a better witness, also a better investigator. All right. So I have an open question. What do you mean open question? Basically open-ended question and close-ended question. Open-ended question is basically ask a question that have multiple multiple uh, answer instead of just asking a question of yes or no. Of course, when you first you ask an open question and the follow answer, then after that you ask a closed question to to confirm the answer that the, the patient has given you. All right. So, but you, that that is later stage. But to start with, you need to ask an open-ended question so that you get more information and you collect the information. And don't and and leading questions should not be used so often. Basically, you try to prevent to. To reduce leading question, also you try to to reduce hearsay question. All right, information of witness has no hand, first hand knowledge of. All right, so the idea is that you not you cannot if the if the question is that you must must understand what the witness know and what the witness don't know. And of course, these are more what you can see from the. So what can you see now? Basically, I mentioned to you earlier. What can you see? Anyone can see anything wrong with this uh, equipment or not? This is a uh, what is called it. This is a grinder machine. It's not. It's called grinder, okay, but it's not a grinder. It's, it's a cutting. Yes, it's 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 it's, it's a it's a machine. It's a. I forgot what's the name already, but okay. Let's yeah. let's look at this and tell me what's wrong. Can you see what's wrong or not? The operator is not wearing, not any wearing gloves. gloves. Okay, the operator not wearing gloves, no problem. And then there is a no, no spark, uh, spark protector. Spark protector, okay. What is a spark protector? Because normally there will be some sort of, uh, I mean like a plate will be placed behind that roller so that the spark will not go to the body of the user. Very good. You, you, very, very good. OK, at least you know, all right? But the idea is that when you when you question the weakness, you shouldn't you shouldn't basically say that. All right, 
Ensure presentation material is free from leading description. See, like this diagram showing uncarded angle grinder with inappropriate electrical connection. All right. So the idea is that you ask the witness to see it. Why? Why is it important? For, why is it important for you to to be able to to, to see when, whether the witness understand the thing is not correct or not? Why? Why do you want? Why you want to know? Why do you want to get the information that the the witness see that the thing is not correct? Why? What is the reason for that? You show the witness uh, equipment that is found, and you ask the witness, "Tell me what is? Tell me about this equipment." All right. What can you What can you tell? So why why is it important for you to get information from the witness, of, of or from the worker itself or from the injured person itself whether the equipment is correct or not? Why? Because sometimes the information is not the witness are using this based on that they think is correct normal. That is the normal practice. That's what you're supposed to do. So the idea is that you need to tell need to inform that this is wrong way of doing it. Sometimes, because we a lot of the a lot of uh, what we call that workers come from different different culture, different background, different safety safety culture safety in 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 their previous workplace. So in the previous workplace, they've been using the same equipment without the guard, and then that's why that's why they have been using it without the guard. All right. So this is the correct way, guard. Correct. This thing is called a guard. All right. So there's a guard to prevent basically spark and also uh, any any uh, uh, well, got that materials from basically going to the workers. Of course, these workers wear uh, so we call, uh, PPE cloth and also wear a uh, glove. Correct. Okay, I understand why. So why is it not? It's, it's not. It's not good to, to ask people. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's wrong. But just to tell, tell, uh, just just show them. Is is there anything wrong with this? Or, not? or is that is that? Don't 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 tell them what is. Uh, the idea is that it's more. It's, it's very important for us to basically look at this. What's wrong here? Oh my goodness! This is very dangerous. Not your goodness. Basically, this is this is this is a guy. You know where is this or not? Uh, yeah, it is in the, like a truck, you know, this is a food truck. Yeah, where is this? Where is this? Maybe Putra Jaya. Hey. At oh, UM. You're, you're, oh, you have not come to come to come to UM before, correct? Oh yeah, only once I've eaten from yeah. there. <laughs> this is near the UM car park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had right. from here once. Okay. So the guy the guy was putting a wire next wire on the ground and then of course and then the basically, basically the road there is sometimes there is a uh, a, a garbage truck actually goes through it. So the garbage truck can go through and then and just just go on the wire. So when I talk to the guy, the guy said, "Oh, nothing wrong with this. This is I've been there all the time. I change the wire once a once a year. I check the wire all the time. Blah 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 lah. Of course, but it's dangerous, correct? Basically, there's wire there. There's water." And if someone's stepping on it and not wearing the correct shoe, basically you get electrocuted. Correct? Yes. What's the grounding? All right? Clear? So the idea is whether you can see or not. Only, you only can see things wrong if you understand, if you know that that is a, if you know what is right. So you need to be more, you need to look at safety and health in a way that you must be able to look at things what is wrong? All right, clear. Anyone have didn't see the problem here? I think all of you see, correct? And of course, you know, electricity cannot mix with water. Is it correct? Yes, bro. yes uh, correct. <laughs> Good. All right. Okay, gathering information. Consider this question. Okay, basically the idea is when you when you want to ask a question. All right, what are you wanting to do? Whether you want to ask whether the what the speed of the car or what's the speed of the car so the idea is whether whether that is the correct question to ask or not okay or can you estimate the speed of the car of either vehicle at the time of the accident so this is more this is more open-ended instead of asking them 
then what is why what, what happened? What is your view of the speed of the two vehicle at the time of the accident? All right. So it's not the question is doesn't doesn't uh, it's not a leading question. It's just asking the person whether they he knows or not. He knows how to do it or not. He knows how to estimate or not. Things like that. All right. Of course, gathering information, you question and weakness. You can use the word we call the the account stage of TED question and tell me, explain to me, and describe to me. Tell me what you know, explain to me, and describe to me. So the idea is that basically you 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 funnel funnel it on and 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 at the end at the end come up with the more detail of the information. So challenge question would be lower in the funnel. All right. Clear? Look at that question. So, so today you understand. You basically, I, I, I give you some acronym. Basically, a uh, piece is one of the prop, one of the thing acronym. Tech is one of the acronym. All right. So look at this. Look at this. All right. This is basically how begins working with a circular saw. The saw breaks down. John from maintenance repair the saw. Koji begins to work on the saw again. The relief operator Fred begins to operate on the saw. The saw breaks down. John repairs the saw and Fred begins to operate again. Goji begins to work at the saw again and Goji has an ex accident cutting his hand on the saw blade. The ambulance arrives and the first aid. So this is basically to, to show you the chronology of event, but the idea is that you get you collect all the event and you can actually identify the issue of where actually how many times an incident can, can, can be prevented and what are the incidents. So the idea is, do they know? Do they know what they are doing or not? Or do they know that is something is wrong or not? So if they don't know something is wrong, is it is it because is their fault or is it because of culturally they are not been trained or culturally they think that is their normal process or procedure? So, so the the problem when you when you get people when you get people from different education level, you get people from different country and you get different people from foreign workers from different culture that comes to come to your workplace and you expect them to, to react and act the same way as you do. All right. It's not going to be correct. All right. So you need to look at it from their perspective and not from your perspective, from their education level and not from your education level. When you want to look at it, when you want to improve the situation in your organization or your workplace. So step three is analyzing the information. So when you got you get all the information already, you have planned for the investigation, you plan to gather information. Now you need to analyze the information. So information obtained should be able to for the investigator to produce the timeline. Okay, as I as we, as we showed just now to demonstrate the why. So what it, what happened? All right, how it happened, where it happened, when it happened, but also whether whether you can you can look at it from why perspective or not. All right. So one way of answer something happened is to look at a conduct a fault tree analysis. So the why perspective, just now what just now it's just a linear, linear process of looking at what happened. All right. Now you want to look now you want to go to a more deeper process of why it happened. So why it happened, you can look, look at from the fault tree analysis. Anyone remember what's fault tree? Those that do HRA will basically look at it from fault tree. All right. Fault tree basically where there's a you 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 did you look at the top event top event is the fault or the failure accident is the top event all right so top event is the failure and then you go down on the way and see where the where actually is the cause of the failure and what is the cause of the failure so information gather all information obtained use information to answer why did the event occur like why did John fall off the ladder why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? Why did this happen? All right. So root cause have been identified when no new information is forthcoming. All right. So look at this. John breaks his leg because John fall. John is on a ladder, access to roof. That's why he broke his leg. All right. So why did he fall? He fall due to gravity. If there's no gravity, he won't fall. So John fall off the ladder slip. The ladder is not tied. So why is the ladder not tied? Oh, all right. So the the thing is, it needs to look at it from a fault tree analysis. And of course, if there's no no answer to the question anymore, you look at it from you stop you stop at it and then you stop and ask the question. So this is a 
looking at the problem using Ford tree to look at the problem. Oh, you remember this, correct? So, no worries, we have some time, okay? So, Koji suffered an accident, cutting his hand on the right blade. Why? Koji was operating a saw. Why? To cut wood. Why? Koji, uh, Koji is the assistant saw operator. Okay. So, why the supervisor told him to cut, cut wood? Why does the supervisor fail the, the supervisor failed to ensure that the saw is, was guarded? Why? All right. Saw was spinning, presenting a hazard. Why? The saw spinning is required to cut the wood. Okay. Koji hand come into contact with the saw blade. Why? The saw blade was not guarded. Why? The operator, the relief operator Fred had removed the guard. Why? Koji used unguarded saw. Why? You start under pressure to complete the work. Why? So the, I, the thing is, that is what you need to do. This is called a four tree and look at the four tree and you identify all the different different branches of the tree and then you basically can extend the branch and then you can look at it from a wide perspective and come up with the root cause and you look at all the causes at the end of it and how which of it you can actually prevent. All right. So Koji, assist, Koji is the assistant saw operator. That one you cannot do anything about it, all right? The the spinning saw is required for wood cutting. That one you cannot do anything about it because you need both of these to actually for the activity to function. So the idea is what can you do to actually prevent the activity or prevent the accident from occurring? Any question? No question. Very good. So analyzing information, the analysis of information will review many types of circumstances and a sub-event, all right? That can also be individual investigated, like human factor, job factor, organization factor, or environmental factor. So you don't, you don't just look at one factor, you look at multiple factors, you simply look at it whether they are, can be prevented. Now, human factor of this particular include physical ability, size, strength, mobility, in injuries, health, and competency, whether the workers actually know what they're doing or not, experience or what behavior issue basically you focus on on cultural and behavioral issue is, is quite important other other factors like fatigue stress morale alcohol drugs or medication so you're talking about legal so behavior issues human falling human failing skill based error so when you talk about behavior issue is it a skill based error is it a slip or a lapse or is it a mistake is it rule based or knowledge based or is it a violation? So the everything else except the violation is basically not a is not the uh, operator force. Only that's when the violation it become a operator force. All right, operator fault of uh, coming up with the problem. So these are these are way of looking at it from analyzing the information of why a behavior failure. Job factor. How much attention is needed? So a task being taken, divided attention on distraction, adequate procedure, the amount of time available for the work. All right. So look at organization factor like work pressure, long hours, availability of insufficient resources, quality of supervision, management of belief in the health and safety. So the safety culture. Safety culture is very, very important in, in any context. So the safety culture. So when, when I talk about those five MO, all right, they're all surgical MO. So if you, do you think that medical MO will do the same thing? Or because surgical MO, basically they are surgeon and they are more gung-ho compared to medical MO. So it's a safety culture between, is there, is there a difference in the safety culture of a surgical MO and a medical MO? Or surgical department and medical department? So are the people in the surgical department communicating or or telling the people enough of what is the safety culture. Environmental factor, the workplace, housekeeping, lighting, noise, layout, traffic, equipment. How easy is it to interpret the controls? Is the equipment designed to detect or prevent error? Are the guarding standard or suitable? So all those things you need to take into consideration. Fourth, identifying risk control. So all causes of accidents now identified, investigation must now 
identify all risk control measures that if in place would have broken the causation chain. Once identified, which will be recorded, recommendation where possible should be followed the hierarchy of control. So hierarchy of control, of course, everybody knows hierarchy of control. Huh? So we just go to elimination, substitution, engineering control, administrative control, and of course, last is personal protective equipment. So I don't think I don't think I need to repeat this anymore. But basically, hierarchy of control is important. Elimination, substitution, engineering control, administrative control, and personal protective equipment. Remember that let day we talked to you about control of occupational diseases. When identifying risk control, consider all possible. Imagine what could be changed to alter the risk of the perception of the risk. This is the opportunity to readdress the risk assessment for the task in hand and also develop an action plan. This is a step that most often miss out in investigation, especially when people are looking for someone to blame. So you shouldn't look for someone to blame. Basically, you look to identify the root cause so that you don't have to blame people. So when identifying risk control, consider how else could work be arranged to prevent next accident from happening, to make the other tasks safer, to improve understanding of the issue, and this will ensure that all lessons have been learned from the event. Action plan. Because action plan have decided what must be done in action plan will ensure that what happened. The action plan must be specified what is to be done, who is to do it when it should be done basically looking at timeline so immediately all right retash card within three months install local exhaust ventilation so the idea is that basically if you identify a problem which is basically the there's no guard and costing the accident which is uh the, the worker cut off the hand but also in the process you also identify that there is a another hazard which is your dust so you can install a local exhaust ventilation to address the second hazard, although it's not related to the accident itself. Final report. All right. We'll provide dependent, depending on author, conclusion of for the accident investigation, evidence of lesson learned, a record of for business and authorities, a means of communicating lessons learned to others, a means of demonstrating that deficiency have been identified and corrected. A vehicle to explain the needs of further resources and have a business case of future significant expenditure. To write a record for of investigation, explain what happened and why action taken to prevent recurrence, information to report can be used. If you have new legislation or communicate findings to other parties and publicize lesson learned. Okay, this is just to tell you what is in the accident investigation report. Ensure consistency, ensure relevant priority matters reported on details of duty holder, details of injured person, compliance with law, facts and opinion and inspector action. Checklist is important if you have a checklist so that you won't miss anything. All right. And of course, the checklist is, un, un, is not usually exhaustive, but if you have checklist, then basic, uh, but sometimes it's too prescriptive or too strict. So, however, it can be useful. So, checklist, if you have it, is good, but you don't cannot only depend on the checklist for focusing on the issue. Okay, so this step in accident investigation, all right, preparation before commencing, okay, and gathering information and and then risk control measures, final report, action plan, and final report. How are you going? How are you going along? Now it's seven twenty-three. Okay, bro. All right. Okay, bro. I think you're all tired. Correct. Okay, bro. Okay, investigation of occupation accident. This is just okay. to tell you there is a guideline that you can actually read and most of the information I present today comes from this uh, guide. All right, so you can just download the guide and basically uh, look at it and follow the guide. So it's important for you to, to understand that how to read the guide, how to follow the guide and what is important in the guide. And at the end of the day, it's just, it's just what, I, what I'm explaining here today is just to make sure that you understand and, uh, and, and look at it. 
So looking at Swiss cheese model, all right, remember that just I said Swiss cheese model, the one thing is important is that we cannot change human condition, but we can change the condition under which human works. So the idea is to change the environment and sometimes the human condition, but it must, it, although you don't change the human condition, but you must identify how do you enhance or how to improve it, all right, the condition. But of course, you can also change the condition where how the human works. Blaming individual is emotionally more satisfying than targeting institution. 